Good morning. Today we are exploring a bit more of New Delhi. We are starting off at Jama Masjid, which is one of the largest mosques in India. It was built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan between 1644 and 1656. Entry costs 300 rupees per person for foreigners, which only works out to about $5 Canadian, so not too bad. And we have the whole place to ourselves, so that's exciting. Let's go explore. This place is absolutely stunning. I think what the most impressive part about this is we've seen obviously a number of grand mosques up to now through various different countries, but each of those realistically has been built within the last 50 years. And obviously they are vast and all that kind of thing. However, what we've discovered is that this holds up to 25,000 people and was built nearly 400 years ago. So clearly the scale, the design, all of that kind of thing was something on which a lot of these other grand mosques have been based. Like clearly this was one of the real archetypes of what a grand mosque should look like. It's amazing. You can still see that there are domes and minarets and a courtyard. It has all the same features, but it's just nowhere near as ornate. Like there's no marble and mosaics and color. It's like this cream and red color, the chandeliers. Although there is at least one that we saw, everything here is just more simple and basic, but that has to do with how long ago it was built. For the time, it's incredibly impressive. Yeah. We are on our way to the Red Fort, but the Red Fort doesn't actually open until 9.30, so about 20 minutes time. In the meantime, we opted to sort out some breakfast. We went via the place where we got Jalebi, because they also do samosas, picked up some of those for just over a dollar. And now we're sat at the same place where we had masala chai yesterday and we've grabbed a couple of cups for ourselves for, what, 50 cents? Yep. Incredible. Turns out the Red Fort is closed today. So we've had to rearrange our plans, but we're now in an Uber. On to the next stop. We have just finished our visit to Swami Narayan Akshardham Temple. That may or may not be how you say it, but as you'll be able to tell, we didn't really take any footage from inside. And the reason for that is it's not allowed. You cannot take photos, you cannot take videos. In fact, they take away your mobile phones they really don't let you bring any purses in, like a money belt is okay, a water bottle, there's no food or drinks inside, and security is tight. When we went through security, they even checked both of our smartwatches to make sure you couldn't make calls through them. So it was pretty intense, but boy, was the whole thing worth it. It's a Hindu temple. It was officially open to the public in 2005. And I think really the only other stuff that we can say is what we can just describe of our experience. Sorry we can't provide any footage, but obviously we weren't allowed. The main feature of the temple is called Akshardam Mandir. And that's like the main temple complex and it's built out of Rajasthani pink sandstone and Italian Carrera marble. The 
exterior as well as the interior is probably the most intricately carved building I've ever seen. It is adorned with everything. It has Hindu deities, it has animals, it has intricate patterns, all of that kind of stuff. Like literally there is not a single part of every nook and cranny that has not been thought out or carved through to be decorative in some way, shape or form. It is absolutely magnificent. And I think the most remarkable thing about the carving is that whether it be the elephants mm -hmm. or the lions or the carriages, the deities, the detail on the toenails, for example, or the jewelry or how realistic the noses look. You even said about all of the animals, they're all in different positions. Yeah. Everything that seems to have been done with so much care, everything seems so uniquely done. And even the parts that are uniform have slight differences and it's just really, really interesting. But I think the best thing about the Mandir is it doesn't scream a huge amount of opulence. It definitely screams decoration, but the vast majority of the building is all just in white card marble until you get to the center and then there is a huge gold statue and then that's where you see all the color as well. Mm -hmm. Precious stones, gold, everything else in between and it's all just packed into there and I feel like the whole idea of that is to really draw attention to that central room so that worship can be led there. Because the statue sitting in the middle of that room in gold is who the temple is dedicated to. And the way I describe that room is it's like all pinks and turquoise and blues. And it looked to me like a room a princess would sleep in, in a palace. Yeah. It was serene, but yet so opulent. And again, the intricacy of the carvings carry through to that area and the rest of the place you walk in a circle around this central part and it's kind of like they have individual open concept circular rooms and they're separated by columns so the columns line each open space circular room as you said the columns and the ceiling all carved but i think the cool thing as well because certainly in a number of other places of worship that we've been, whoever it is dedicated to, then it's not the most accessible. Like, unless you're able to speak like Latin or Arabic or something like that, then you kind of get excluded from understanding who the place of worship is dedicated to. So you kind of have to Google around to try and figure it out. However, in this instance, there were a multitude of paintings that depicted key moments in this person's life. And as a result, you were able to get the full backstory as to why they were so special and why they deserved to be worshipped in that place. Which I found really interesting and it was great because it brought us into the experience a bit more as well. The other incredible thing is it's absolutely free to visit. And I do understand why they don't allow cameras and photography. This place is so beautiful that people would be doing photo shoots for Instagram all over the place. And at the end of the day, it's a place of religious worship and you need to respect the culture and the traditions Absolutely. and what the building represents. Yeah. I have never been to a Hindu temple before and it's nothing like a church, a cathedral, a mosque. And I hope to be able to visit more in the future. Me too. Honestly, that was stunning. Unlike really anything that I've seen before. And yeah, I think the great thing was it wasn't just about the temple. The surrounding walls, gates, gardens were just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I can't describe it really any, any better than that. So I hope we have done it justice yep. in our description and encourage you to come here because fundamentally if you are in Delhi and you do have the time, it is admittedly a bit outside the city centre, but 
it's so worth adding to your list. In the meantime, we are going to attempt to take the metro to our next stop. Wish us luck. After a very pleasant metro ride and cheap, it only cost 60 rupees for both of us, which is just under a dollar. So in the future, I think if we can, we will be taking more trips on the metro when we go out exploring here in New Delhi. Anyway, we have finally arrived to a Grasen Ki Boli. Again, who knows if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it is a step well that was originally built by King Agrasen and he was born 5,000 years ago. So that gives you an idea of how old it is. And what is a step well exactly? It is pretty much what it sounds like. So in order for people to gain access to water, then they need to gain access to wells. The easiest way to give them access to it to use freely was to implement staircases. So with that, then literally all this is, is a well with a staircase in it. And the initial structure, as mentioned, was probably about 5,000 years ago, but it was believed to have been renovated to its current state in about the 14th century AD. especially considering the fact it's free. Now we're going to go do something that's not free, which is get the metro home. But it's still cheap. After an okay lunch, we are back at the hotel and I'm pretty sure we overpaid for that a little. It was 220 rupees, which works out to still under four Canadian dollars. So my standards are high, but I think that I was just expecting better food and cheaper food, but we were hungry. It was directly on the way back from the metro to our hotel, so you know how things go sometimes. Yeah, I think that food tour maybe set the bar a little bit too high, so... But you know what? It's all good. We're not going to have, like, perfect food all the time. And it did the trick. It filled the hole. So as far as that went, then that was okay. But. I accept the challenge to find fantastic Indian food for the next almost month that we're here. I am more than happy to join you on that quest. I think that's pretty much it in terms of what we got planned for today. Until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.